team. And my guest today in studio is Salome Mpenya from FemNet, African Women Development Communication Network, I believe. Yes. Salome, many thanks for making t time for us this morning. These days, often, lots of men and lots of women self-identify as feminist. It often means different things to different people. What does feminism mean to you? Uh, thank you, Abu Bakr, for hosting me. I will begin by defining what feminism is. It's the belief that uh, men and women are equal. They all have uh, equal intellectual capabilities. They have the right to enjoy equal rights. And they deserve equal opportunities in life. So for me, feminism, it means just availing equal opportunities for men and women. And appreciating the fact that um, over the years, historically, women have been disadvantaged because um, we, have have, we have had women confined to the household. This, is, a not, this you, is not a choice mm -hmm. that they consciously made. When, but when yes. you talk of equalness between the two genders, mm -hmm. does the equalness have limits? Absolutely not. Equal opportunities in terms of um, giving men and women the right to choose and not confining either a man or a woman to certain gender roles. Uh, for example, um, availing equal education opportunities for both the girl child and the boy child. But we have seen that in our country that sometimes because of certain factors, girls cannot go to school. Number one, either because of unfair division of labor, whereby the girl has to, you know, to be at home, to cook for people, to go and fetch water. But the boy has the opportunity to go to school. The boy has the opportunity to study because the boy doesn't go home to cook. Uh, historically, and we will agree for those who read, women have been marginalized. It's fair to say that. But why have women as well lagged behind? Uh, women have not lagged behind. Haven't they? They have not. If you look um, in our country and in Africa be, uh, and beyond, women have tried to advance themselves, whether it's in science, it's in leadership. And I can give an example of the women leaders in our country. Uh, irrespective of all the cultural practices, you know, that demean women, that are not receptive of women leadership, women have, go have gone against the green to prove themselves that they can. It is not a question of questioning the ability of women. Um, I was listening to an interview by Joyce Banda, and she said that um, people are born, uh, leaders are born with 30% leadership capability, and that 70% is nurtured. So women are born, I believe, with that 30%, and men are too. It's good that, you made, mention society, of, it's yes? good that you made mention of women leaders, because mm -hmm. often we hear the cliche that women are the greatest enemies of their own. Are they? No, absolutely they're not. It is just a narrative that has been cultivated. Uh, women are Who's good. Who's cultivating this narrative before you even answer that? It's, it's a patriarchal nature. It's the patriarchal society that, uh, that we have. Women have been socialized to see each other as competitors, you know. Uh, when you see another woman uh, rise, uh, rising, you want to bring her down. But that is not the case. I have seen it, women organizing and women coming together to do great things. So absolutely, women are not enemies of each other. And what are the root causes of the inequalities between the two genders? Where does it sprout out from? OK, thank you. Uh, we live in a patriarchal culture uh, that, number one, places low value on women. So at the time of birth, when a girl is born, she realizes that she's different. Number one, her place is already set up. She's told, um, you're going to grow up, you're going to be a wife, you're going to be a mother, and your roles are set out. But the boy child, the boy child is groomed. You know, you're taken to school. So do they also have roles that are set up? Yes, they also have roles that are set up for them. And that's why we are saying we have to challenge these roles. Uh, we, have, we are seeing... Um, the, the, women, the men are also being overwhelmed by the role that is set on them to provide economically. So where, where you find that in a relationship where um, a woman earns more than the man, we have issues whereby the man feels, I am not manly because I am not able to provide, or I earn less 
than the woman. And there is a time also the woman feels she is earning more than the man, so the king of the queen rather of the house, isn't it? Let's be fair to both the genders, even though you are defending one. Yes, uh, because of. Um the cultural expectation that a man is supposed to be aggressive, a man is supposed to be the breadwinner, and a man is supposed to be provide. So whereby a man does not meet this expectation, then we have that disparity and the woman feels, you know, this relationship is not right for me. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a lot of fear mm -hmm. within the men's circles, partly those I sit under, when, mm -hmm. you, when you hear the word feminism. There is the view that feminists are a bunch of women, for the lack of a better word, who are mm -hmm. railing against when, men who are angry at men. Is that the case? Wow. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. But I agree that that um, has been the notion that has been perpetuated. But I, uh, I believe this is because people do not understand what feminism is. Feminism is not a man-hating movement. Feminism is not a movement whereby women say, you know, we want to rule the world. We are saying that we just want what is rightfully ours. We want to have our choices respected. And does that include... And we want to when, have equal opportunities. And does that include, men. when I read the works of uh, renowned uh, feminists, who, in literal sense, if you read their work, it's, mm -hmm. as, it's as though they're bashing men. So is there a limit of feminism that is progressive on the women's side and not hating on man's side, and a feminism that is progressive, yes, but as well bashing men? Well, I absolutely believe that feminism is about equality. And it is a fair system that is fair to everyone, mm -hmm. the man and the woman. But we have to understand where the disparity comes in, whereby um, the, man have, has, uh, are, the men are seen as you know, the perpetrators. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, cases of gender-based violence, who are the major perpetrators of violence? Men. It's men. Who are the people in power? It's men. Mm -hmm. Who are the privileged people? Mostly, it's men. So they are in a position of power, and they are using the difference in power relations to, at times, exploit women. Mm -hmm. That is why we have And is the reverse this of friction. an equally true? The reverse of what you said, is it often equally true? That there are women as well in positions of power who are abusing men? Uh, well... If you could give me an example, mm -hmm. statistics don't show. Statistics show the reverse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's talk of toxic femininity. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Uh, basically, uh, toxic femininity, uh, if I can say, is um, you know, is uh, what I define that feminism is not. Is not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Toxic feminism can be man-hating. It can be like you know, women rule the world, we don't care about men. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm encouraging just feminism the way it is. And I am asserting that feminism is about equal opportunities for men and women. Basically that. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. Before we proceed, yes. can I be a man and be a feminist at the same time? Absolutely, you can. Mm -hmm. A feminist is a man or a woman who believes in the political, social, and economic rights of women. So if you have a sister, and you believe that your sister deserves to go to school, and you believe that your sister can be a leader in your community, then you are a feminist. We talked of feminism, and we also talked of toxic femininity. Yes. To me, as someone who reads the works of feminists, it seems as though the latter, toxic femininity, is getting louder than feminists who are as progressive as you are and as feminist members are. Mm -hmm. Why does it seem as though it is the toxic feminists who are getting louder? Okay, um, de um, definitely when you are oppressed, and I believe that women feel that they are oppressed, uh, if you look at the cases of uh, gender-based violence, if you look at uh, the deliberations in our parliament whereby uh, the contribution of women is uh, being demeaned, whereby women leaders are attacked, whereby women leaders, if they have a different opinion from each other, mm -hmm. they are portrayed as women who are fighting each other. Yes, they are angry. When you are oppressed, you are angry. And I understand that feminists sometimes can get angry. And they are angry for a cause. And anger is good, 
And anger is what is going to champion for change. And does that so we anger, have to be that angry anger, does, until the word listens. Does that anger at times fail in championing the cause? That it is your anger that is seen rather than what you are championing for? Um, maybe, maybe not. But sometimes, you know, when diplomatic means phase, you have to be a bit radical. Mm -hmm. And that is how um, feminism um, started. We had the radical feminism. Mm -hmm. Because the kind of oppression was radical. So it called for, you know, the, the ban the bra movement, you know, no, uh, no, uh, wear the, the, the trouser suit, you know, the power suit. It's because they needed to feel like men. And they felt so aggressive because the oppression was real. So radical oppression calls for radical forms of empowerment. And does that yes. radical form of empowerment pay towards the end? Yes, it paid. Because the radical feminists, they gave us the right to vote. They gave us the maternity leave. Yes, so there are a lot of gains. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we pride ourselves from the radical feminists. Fair enough. Yes. Salome, you are from Feminet. Yes, uh, I am. I believe you work with women. Yes. What are some of the basic challenges women go through? What are some of the things they tell you once you sit down with them? OK. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's the issue of uh, sexual and gender-based violence. Um, when, whereby women are at uh, the mercy of their partners, uh, where they economically depend on, for example, their husband. And basically, this partner has power over them. And, you know, they provide food for them, they, they provide shelter. So basically, they are at their mercy. And women have been abused. Uh, we have seen cases uh, in the media whereby women have been chopped hands for reasons that. Um, Maybe she went out, mm -hmm. she stripped stayed naked out as, too as long. Was the case yes, also. stripped mm -hmm. naked. Mm -hmm. So, those are some of the issues. Um, at a leadership level, uh, we have uh, cases whereby you know, women are trying to ascend the leadership ladder, but the cultural bias, you know, you're told, ah, ah you, you're a woman, just go and get married. You know, you, you can't make it. And your contribution, the contribution you put on the table is not valued. Mm -hmm. We also, we have many issues. We have um, maternal mortality. Uh, we have cases of teenage pregnancies, uh, which have manifested uh, clearly in the case of uh, the, uh, the ongoing uh, national exams in the just concluded uh, KCP, where we saw young girls, you know, uh, the education cut short, and they have to sit the exams when they are expectant. Mm -hmm. Those are the issues that are affecting women. And also, um, I've also seen a feature you have aired of uh, women who are at the mercy of quack doctors because our health system is not um, receptive to the needs of women. So women... What do you mean when you say it's not receptive to the needs of women? Um, I, I, I would say, number one, uh, the issue of uh, affordability. Uh, healthcare is expensive in Kenya. And uh, health programs are targeted at women, for example, the Linda Mama, are a good initiative. But uh, there's not been enough uh, outreach uh, to the women so that they can be, uh, benefit uh, uh, via these programs. Mm -hmm. And we have cases whereby women don't have IDs, so they are not able to register for, for this service. And we have cases where women have gone to a hospital and the nurses have been, you know, uh, very aggressive, they've not understood them. So women, some women are afraid to seek medical health care. And uh, in cases like, I can point to the case of uh, Mugo or Arimo, uh, whereby women are having cases of um, unsafe abortion. Unfortunately, that's a case before court. We can yes. delve deeper into the merits and the demerits of that. Okay. But I, I wanted to ask of feminism and the African uh, mind, the African uh, setup. Mm -hmm. Is feminism African on its own? Okay. Yes, feminism is African. And for African women, feminism has to be African. It is basically um, the belief uh, for equality for African women tailored on our continental needs. It is appreciating that African women have their problems, just like women in other parts of the world. But these problems are unique to them and they are part of the solution. They are not a problem and they are not a group of helpless women, you know, who are waiting to be, served, uh, to be, to be saved. So African feminism appreciates the strength of African women mm -hmm. and looks at them 
as part of the solution as women who understand what their problems are and women who understand what needs to be done for the problems to be solved. And what needs to be done, does that include also understanding the African culture, which many at times is male-dominated, male-oriented, crafted and thought upon male thinking? Does that include it? Yes, it does. Uh, we have to appreciate that we live in a patriarchal society and we are striving to smash patriarchy and we are striving to make um, uh, our, our male, uh, the male species understand that, hey, even us women, we exist. And we are not saying like, you know, hey, get off the seat. We're saying just move for us. We deserve a place at the table, mm -hmm. yes. You're saying it with a sense of humility, contrary to what many feminists often portray it as, mm -hmm. which is get out of the chair, it's my time to sit. You have sat so long. Ah, uh, well, yes, women, uh, men have sat on the seat for that long. They have hogged all the opportunities. But we are saying, yes, you have hogged all, all, all the opportunities, but now it's time for you to, you know, to move for us, like have half of, half of the seat and women to have half of the seat, not for anything because we deserve it. And uh, for women to have half of the seat, we need to have uh, affirmative action. Basically, understanding that women have suffered historical injustices and they need like, um, like a, um, a step up, you know, so as to able to, to reach where the men are. And what are some of the historical injustices you say women have suffered over the years? Okay, number one, uh, from time immemorial, women have been confined, uh, confined to the household. Basically, they have not had an opportunity to go to school. Uh, basically, women are the ones who are um, victims of sexual and gender-based violence. They're the ones who are victims of um, early pregnancies of female genital mutilation. These factors affect the way women grasp opportunities in life. If a man is educated, he's able to get a job. Mm -hmm. He's able, you know, to uh, d depend on himself economically. Fair enough. So have women who are not. educated have fought for their positions, be it in leadership, be it in companies, be, be it in big mm -hmm. corporates. Mm -hmm. So narrowing it down that it's men who are tailoring women towards an end seems to me as though it's been unfair. Probably it's not to you. The system is unfair to women mm -hmm. because of those historical injustices that I have said. Basically, so we are saying the woman needs to be empowered. The, women need to, uh, the woman needs to be saved from issues of child marriage. Uh, the woman needs to be educated. The woman basically needs to be empowered and protected from sexual and gender-based violence mm -hmm. to be able to be at par with, with, with the man because the man already Society favors him. Society tells him you're capable, and, and, and no one, no one abuses him. You know. It's, and when you talk of society favoring a man, is it a case of a man favoring himself, or what does a society, in your definition, include? Ah, uh, well, um, in a patriarchal society, b both men and women can be both uh, perpetrators of patriarchy, whereby men are holding on to the power and they're not willing to give it up. And we have a case whereby women are also uh, perpetuating um, patriarchy, whereby uh, in the household, you know, you'll have the mother telling the, the daughter, you know, why are you reading the newspaper? Go to the kitchen, you know. Mm -hmm. But that is not uh, told to the, uh, to the, to the boy child. That is um, per perpetuating patriarchy. So it, it's both ways, both the men and both the, uh, the women mm -hmm. are also um, perpetrators of patriarchy. And they need to be enlightened so as to shift this paradigm. Fair enough. You, you made mention of some of the historical injustices women have faced. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the time, of course, 50 years, 40 years, mm -hmm. and now, has progress been made? Yes, absolutely. Progress has been made. Uh, we have seen uh, that uh, now girls are able to access education. And uh, even with the cases of uh, teenage pregnancies, uh, it is commendable that the Ministry of Education did its best to ensure that uh, girls uh, accessed uh, education in the various circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen in uh, leadership, women have uh, done it all to grasp uh, seats, uh, either constituency seats, either women rep, in, in terms of innovation, 
we have seen women breaking the, the, the glass uh, ceiling. Fair enough, not also to mention the wave of change in Ethiopia where I understand half of, of the cabinet secretary yes. is there. Yes, and we have a, a, women, female, a female president, president a yes. female, uh, the electoral commission body there. Yes. Uh, fair enough. Mm -hmm. On the 17th of November 2014, uh, Kenyan women demonstrated the, the stripping of a lady by Ambassador Matatu Taut, mm -hmm. uh, which gave birth to what is largely known today as my dress, my, dress, my, my choice. choice yes. My question is, does feminism also posit that women can wear whatever they want? Does it? Uh, okay. The choice to wear whatever one wants is um, individual. It's not an ideology of, of, of feminism. Feminism is basically just, you know, equality. But what we are saying that as a woman, as I step out of the house, I have a right to be safe, irrespective of what I am wearing. It, it doesn't justify. And um, the issue here is not uh, the issue of the dress. The issue here is the issue of abuse and the issue of lack of respect for women's rights. We have women who are wearing hijabi who are abused. Yes. We have young children who are abused. So it is not a question at all of dress. So however a woman is dressed, that is her choice. She knows the place where, it's going, where she's going, and we don't know what, involved, what informed the decision of her dress. Mm -hmm. So however a woman is dressed, it does not justify abuse on a woman. Fair enough. We talked of the my dress, my choice. Let's talk of the Me Too movement, a global wave as well mm -hmm. of women coming out to narrate stories, horrific stories, I must say, yes. of men abusing them, be it at the places of work, mm -hmm. offices, and what so. Mm -hmm. How much of a change, how much of a wave, a wave of change has this Me Too movement cost? Okay, thank you. Uh, so the Me Too movement has broken the culture of silence around sexual abuse. We have developed a culture whereby victims of sexual abuse are blamed. And when we blame the victim... They're being blamed for being abused. They're being blamed for being abused. You find it ridiculous, right? Thank you. Fair enough. Yes. Victims are being blamed. And when you blame the victim, you are giving the perpetrator power to continue perpetrating abuse against the victims. We have had cases whereby a woman has been raped but what is the first question that we ask? What was she wearing? Why was she walking alone at night? Mm -hmm. You know? So what are you telling the perpetrator? That the perpetrator has the power to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Because after all, I will not be blamed. I will not, um, the, the victim will not, will not get justice. So we are giving them power to do whatever they want to do. Fair so enough. the Me Too movement broke the silence and it is important for women to speak up against sexual abuse, uh, seek counseling, and also get justice. As we conclude this conversation, yes. uh, the Me Too movement hashtag mm -hmm. has attracted 4.7 million, of course, users, 12 million posts within the 24 hours, the first 24 hours mm -hmm. the hashtag was used. There are those who claim that using hashtags is an elitist kind of movement. What's your reaction to that as we conclude? No, it's not elitist. It's just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And when we're having a conversation on issues, we are taking the spotlight on those issues. And people are aware that this is happening. And more women are able to speak out. More women are able to tell their stories. More women are able to seek help. Mm -hmm. They're able to get counseling. And more women are able to get help on where they can get justice. It's good that you made mention of more women using the hashtag to tell their stories. Because largely, these are people who are on social media, yes. somewhat privileged. Mm -hmm. What of the downtrodden women who lives in far areas, far valleys, who has mm -hmm. been abused and harassed? Uh, well, that is why uh, women rights activists, we are here to go to the grassroots, to interact with the grassroots women. Uh, we have many programs whereby we, where we go to informal settlements, we go to rural areas, and we interact with those women. We make them realize what sexual abuse is. We, 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 we make them realize what oppression is. And we give them options. We tell them, you know, you, you, you have a right to be free from violence and discrimination. And when this happens, this is what you can do. You can reach out to someone, and if you are abused, 
it is not your fault. I wonder that must be including a lot of persuasion to urge a woman who has been violently abused to come out and narrate her story to you, does it? Yes, it is. Because number one, um, sexual and gender-based violence has a psychological impact on the abused. Our, number one, you are traumatized and uh, you, want, you just want to hide. Uh, you know, uh, you're confused. Um, you feel uh, you are worthless. Sometimes you are in pain. Uh, where in case extreme cases where we have seen women, uh, their hands are chopped. So basically, sometimes and, and sometimes in most cases, the women feel that they don't have value. Mm -hmm. So they just want this to end. They just want let me go to the hospital. Let me get medical help, and I don't want to get justice. So yes, I agree. It is hard to convince them, but it must be done. Finally, one last question. Mm -hmm. The future of fem feminism. What does the future of feminism look like? Okay. The future of feminism, feminism is bright. And I can say the future is feminist. Our, I, I equate uh, feminism to equality. And I say that for us to realize sustainable development, we have to embrace equality of both the men and the women. The former president of the United States, uh, President Barack Obama, said, you cannot win a match if half of your team is not playing. So half of the team, for a long time, women have not been playing. So we need to bring the women on board so that we can realize the sustainable development goals and other agendas. Salome and Thenya from Feminet, African Women Development Communication Network. Many thanks for making time for us and presenting, of course, the ideology of feminism and explaining to our audience. We appreciate your time. Thank well, you that brings time. us to the end of this conversation. We are taking a short commercial break. When we come back from the break, we will delve deeper into politics and ask the question whether the opposition is dead or not. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>